Well, when we determined the, uh, the scroll format, you know, the banded realms idea, it became clear that I was going to be the lower world, or the tail as we <laughs> And it was actually quite natural because uh, over the last few years, my sketchbooks and notebooks have filled up with uh, subterranean imagery. I've, I've imagined a cave space. I've been, you know, visualizing and imagining and building it. And, uh, and although, you know, we, Mary and I have done a little studying of shamanism, I wasn't doing a traditional lower world power animal journey kind of depiction. The, the first thing I thought about this, this, this long form, long form, uh, horizontal format is a, is a challenge. And, and the first thing I thought of, um, I'm not a gamer myself, but I've worked in the computer game world and, and done art for them, um, is I thought of a, a side-scrolling computer game. Something like this, and there happen to be rocks in this one as well. But also in those games, there's always this, uh, you know, you're in, the, you're in the underworld, you get, you jump around, you gain some points, and you're always going to that upper realm. So it, it seemed like a, a, an interesting, uh, you know, uh, analogy. Um, I created my scroll on the computer. Uh, I do a lot of digital art, and uh, I'm an oil painter as well, but uh, in my day-to-day -day life, it entails a lot of digital work. Uh, I draw and paint on the computer using a Wacom stylus, and I build 3D models. And this is a, a, a working view of a 3D model here. Here's the actual thing once it's rendered. And uh, I make, uh, I'm interested in the way that the, the computer can make marks and shapes and, and do things that I can't do at all, actually, you know, or easily by hand. And um, I'm always looking for ways to bring my oil painting and my digital work together. Here's a virtual fabric that I, I did some, there's a couple of fabrics, curtains in this show. Here I've mapped on a, a Veronese painting, a favorite painting of mine from the Metropolitan Museum. This is uh, Paolo Veronese, uh, he's a Venetian uh, Renaissance master, and this is uh, Venus and Mars. Here's an actual working view of the cave, and as you can see, it's a very faceted kind of look. I became interested in particularly this painting at the Frick Collection, St. Francis in the, in the Desert. And I've, I've done, a, it's a nod to the video games here, I've made him a pixelated version of St. Francis and because he is digital. Here he is in, in the real form. I was really fascinated as I started to think about caves, as I have been for a few years, these Renaissance paintings in which the artists have these very, you know, they had to make all the rocks up. They're, they're not looking at a real cliff, and, but they have a very synthetic, made-up quality, which I really love. I, this is a Montana, the, the last one was a Bellini. That's also a Bellini. Here's another Bellini, but I just love these shapes. And so I started to draw these faceted uh, caves and, and things in, the, in, the, uh, in my sketchbooks. But then I took it one step further, and as you, well, I, I skipped over that picture, but as you can see, the caves became this very set, faceted, synthetic kind of uh, world. And, and so, as I said, it won't be the last cave I'm doing. I'm still fascinated by this. And well, once I entered my contemplative cave, I began to think about moments in my life in which I'd undergone initiation. And these became my mystery school. I was particularly interested in rekindling the moment in which, having drawn myself forward by curiosity, I stood at a doorway ready to learn and transform myself. I could imagine myself in a new way, but, it, but, I, but could I become that person? My lifelong exploration of art and music has been a constant, but I tried to look for less obvious images. And here I am contemplating this journey. And I started my journey uh, by literally going underground. I, I went down in our basement crawl space and unearthed some childhood books. Here are a few of the themes that I, well, that I arrived from these. Scouting was a big, uh, very rewarding experience for me. Uh, my troop camped in the hills of southern Ohio, and we spent a lot of time exploring caves and sleeping in caves. Here I am as a scout. I spent a lot of time poring over all the uh, the manuals and the, the handbooks, you know, I didn't know anything, you know, and there were all these great things, all this first aid and with these horrific pictures of wounds and gushing blood, and, you know, I, I just was fascinated, you know, and, 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 I, and I learned it, I mean, but I was standing there saying, can I do this, you know, life-saving, knot tying, you know, this is the bowline, which is the famous, uh, this is like the life-saving knot, pioneering, building, building things, building bridges, all these things were fascinating, and I continued to be fascinated by scouts, and I went on to become an Eagle Scout, so stuck with it. Throughout my teens and into college, I was a lifeguard. Um, 
I loved it, uh, but I have to say that the the uh, this manual and the whole process of training for Red Cross certification was a was a sobering experience. And here I am as a lifeguard. Right? The, the, you had this book full of these strange underwater pictures, you know, that were shot in the 40s or something, and, and it just I just I was fascinated by them. And you had this this big cadaverous mannequin that you're teach, you know, that you're doing CPR on, and, and so it's, it was you know. It was fascinating. <coughs> so I got a little bit of that in my scroll. See, there, it's, it's got kind of hidden there, but there's a, I stuck that photograph in. I grew up in the shadows of uh, this grouping of uh, radio towers, and I could see the red blinking lights at night from my bed. And I had to walk around the fenced in enclosure on my way to school every day. The radio interference was constant. We, we would pick up the radio signals on household appliances. It, it was always there. <laughs> and so, you know, the, the towers have become this omnipresent symbol for me. Bugs Bunny. I was fascinated by this Warner Brothers cartoon very early on. And, and lo and behold, years later, I, I worked for Warner Brothers because uh, Mad Magazine is one of my regular clients. I know owned by Warner Brothers, so I just realized that today. But I, I absolutely am fascinated by this uh, this. This is, uh, well, I guess we saw this. what is it called? Water, Water, Every Hair. I don't know if you know this one, but it's uh, the dark, angular beauty of this cartoon in which a sleeping bug floats into the castle of an evil scientist and escapes in a cloud of ether still inspires me. I realize why, because it was my first exposure to surrealism. And it still fascinates me. It's a great one if you ever get to see it. But it's, <laughs> and, it and it just jumps from one thing to another. And then, So anyway, I, I, I placed it on one. I, I, here he is. Uh, he's asleep and he totally washes out of his, uh, there's a lot of subconscious kind of things here, but um, I've, I've mapped it onto one of those curtains. I find the subconscious connections that emerge in my work fascinating, and so I was very excited to see how th all three of our work would fit together when we came up with this show. We had a theoretical vision of how the show would look, but only after the installation could we experience the resonance and surprises of our realms. So let's con continue the conversation in the gallery. Thank you. <laughs>